So you find yourself in the US having mastered or not mastered the uh, convoluted and challenging UK pension landscape. You now have to master the US one which, with its similarities and its differences and idiosyncrasies. So here, is, here are some of the highlights that I think a British expatriate in America uh, might want to know to help them navigate and make the most from this system. So the most common pensions that you're going to come across are the 401k and the IRA. 401k is your company pension scheme. It's employer provided. You pay into it. They pay into it. Hopefully there's a match. There's a probably a limited basket of funds and it's your company pension equivalent. And you save into it uh, as you would in the UK into a company pension. And if you move, you have another 401k, hopefully. The IRA is the personal pension or the SIP equivalent. This is the retirement account in your name that you manage or you employ someone else to manage, but it's in your name. And this is where you might have three or four 401ks from various employers and you consolidate them into a single IRA, or maybe you just want access to more investment options or to have it managed by a certain firm. And then that's why an IRA would become relevant. So what are the what are some of the main differences though? So there are contribution limits like there are in the UK. You put money in, assuming it you're within the limits, you, that money is tax deferred, so you don't pay tax on it now. It grows tax-free, growth and in income is tax-free within the retirement account wrapper, whether it be it a 401k or the IRA. And then in the future, you take money out and it comes out taxable, taxable as income. So that's some of the similarities. Some of the differences, though, is the access age. In the UK, it's 55, and you ain't getting it out before that, apart from some very limited circumstances. In the US, it's 59 and a half. Now, you can access it before 59 and a half, but there's a 10% penalty, and then it's taxable as income at your fullest, at your highest marginal rate. So that's a key difference. Another difference would be there's no tax-free provision in the in the US. In the UK, we benefit from a 25% tax-free lump sum at the outset. Uh, this d- is, is not replicated in the US. Everything that comes out is taxable. Some unique aspects to some 401ks and 403bs is there's a loan facility, so it, scheme to scheme, but there's often a loan facility. So you can borrow, I think it's up to $50,000 from some schemes a year, or uh, and then you have to pay that back. And some 401ks allow penalty-free access from 55 if you retire from the position. That's lost upon transfer, so that's something always to be mindful of and watch out for. If you're thinking about early retirement, uh, that can be a a big benefit. We get asked about Roth IRAs a lot. Now, Roths are analogous to ISAs. ISAs, you you contribute money, you don't get tax relief, but then it grows tax-free and you you take it out tax-free. Roths, similar situation. You contribute money post-tax, it grows tax-free, it comes out tax-free, but there are, there are limits, income limits. So if you earn over a certain amount, you can't put money into a Roth. You can do a Roth conversion, which which is where you convert your 401k or your IRA into a Roth. Uh, you can't do that in the UK with an ISA. And we get asked about this a lot because on paper, it sounds fantastic, uh, uh, tax-free growth and tax-free withdrawals. In reality, we don't do that many of them because... People who come over here, as I've said, tend to be relatively high earners. That means they're in a high tax bracket. Now, there are obviously unique circumstances and planning that can be done, but oftentimes we find that the tax burden to con- to, to do that uh, renders it unattractive uh, at that moment. It doesn't mean that won't change as the circumstances change. Required minimum distributions. Now, this is something that will take expats by surprise. You have to start withdrawing funds from IRAs, 401ks at a certain age. I think it's 72 now. And that increases. You have to withdraw more as you get older. Reason being is the US has given you tax deferral on the way in. They haven't collected any taxes. They haven't collected any taxes. It's been growing. And now they want to collect some taxes. They don't want you to hold on to that until you die. So they're going to force you to take some money out so they can start to reclaim some of that. Now, there's penalties for not doing that, so it's worth knowing about it and planning for it and not ending up with a surplus of income. Um, It's just something to bear in mind. Finally, if you exit, if you go back to the UK or elsewhere, you need to be mindful of whether you're a citizen, a US citizen, or you're in a green card. If you're a green card, are you a covered expat? If you're a covered expat, are you going to be subject to the exit tax? Because the exit tax has the potential to treat... 401ks and IRAs very differently and this needs to be understood and plan needs to be taken 
as always, consult a tax advisor. I'm going to say this a lot, and you're going to get bored of hearing me say it, but it's super important. Okay, so hopefully that's not too much on US retirement accounts, just some headline stuff that I think will help British expatriates navigate this new system. Uh, As ever, reach out to us if we can help. Thank you.